Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're gonna do a review of Tailwind Figma, which is a Figma kit optimized for Tailwind CSS. Now this kit isn't like any other kit. This kit is one of the best UI kits I've ever seen. It's one of the most comprehensive and most detailed kits I've ever seen. Now full disclosure, I was contacted by the guys over at Themesburg that make this kit to make a video about it. But if it wasn't for them reaching out to me, I probably would have seen it anyways and bought it with my own money. Now, one of the benefits of using this Tailwind Figma UI kit is that it has such a comprehensive library of variants for components. Along with these variants, one of the really impressive things is how easy it is to integrate it into CSS. Now I'm not really a developer and I know a lot of you guys watching out there aren't either. So I'm gonna do a really basic tutorial on how you can actually implement the CSS from Figma into your Chrome browser. So as I've said, one of the most impressive things with this UI kit is how much stuff there actually is in here. If we go over to the style guide, we'll see that there's so many colors and so much typography and spacing and shadows and borders and hero icons and just so much stuff that they give you right off the bat for you to know that you're using the correct type, the correct width, the correct font, Everything is laid out for you so that you can't make a mistake. And as was said already with the entire CSS thing, these are some of the codes that you have to input into Chrome. And I'll show you guys how to do that later in the video. So here we have all the color options ranging from 050 to 900, obviously 900 being the darker ones and 050 being the lighter ones. Two different versions of gray. We have red, orange, yellow, anything you want up to pink. You've got all these spacing that is really useful when you're actually spacing out different components or different UI elements. And again, that just makes it really easy for you to not get confused when you're actually spacing these things out. But let's jump right into the components and I'll show you guys just how impressive this UI kit really is. This is the first thing that you see when you enter the components tab or the, or the, the components page. When you go in here, there must be at least a thousand different variants and options that you can use to create your your pages and your examples and your, and your entire dashboard if you wanted to. Now these are the options for the variants just for the button. So just so you guys know how much you actually get when you, when you buy this, look at all the different options that you get here. You get five different sizes, you get three different states. So you get a regular, a hovered and an active button or a focus and you get it in the same color schemes as you did with the colors so when we saw that before now within this you also have versions with text and with the icons or just the icons and you can also do with just the text now i'm going to do a few examples of this or a little demo of this so you guys can actually see just how easy it is to actually create these these separate buttons or variants if you haven't already and you don't really know how to use them. You also have this with sidebars. So when you're creating a dashboard for different pages, here is all the different sidebars that you can use. So it comes with two different options. So you can either do with icons, uh, without icons or with icons. And then you also have the kind of closed down version. So when it's not extended and without seeing all the actual words. So this is before you actually click on it per se. And then you also have some input variants. Now this is one of the coolest things that I've seen with a UI kit on Figma. The amount of inputs and variants and nav bars that these guys have done for you to use and for you to, to kind of create your, your own pages and your websites is just insane. Here we see the nav bars and not only did they create all this UI kit for desktop, but they also did it for tablet and for mobile. So you get three different versions when you buy this thing. And the great thing about it is how customizable it is. So if you're creating a page that has a different navigation that you need to use or a different element, you can just change it with a variance. And it's, it's super, super easy to use. And I'll show you guys in a little bit how you actually use it. But here are all the different versions. You have it in all the colors and you have progress bars so when you upload something maybe you have different menus for for calendars when you're picking out a date you have different horizontal lines if you're creating a graph or a bar chart or something along the lines of that and you also have illustrations that you can use on your own website so they're perfectly fine for you to use and then you also have a section of flags let alone the icons that you saw in the beginning of the video apart from that you also have group buttons you have badges and progress bars and then you also have drop downs. So now that I've showed you guys some of the components, let me show you how it actually works and how you actually would go about adding this to a page or to something, something that you are building yourself. If we go over to assets and we style by components, 
we see that we can just drag in one of these components. So if, say if I want to drag in this button text here, once you click or once you have the button in the frame, you want to go over here into the right section where it says button, you hover over type. So maybe you want the different color to be pink. You choose the size. So if it's the base for the page or if you want it large or extra large, you will know how big it needs to be just visually. And if you know the basics of UI, this is pretty easy stuff. You click on base, or small or large or whatever it is, say that you want it with a icon on the left. Well, then you add it to the left and then say that you want it to be in the hover state. So imagine something is hovering over it and you want to kind of show that with a mock-up or with a presentation for a client, something like that. Now we have a fully working button. And if I just use command and double click on this, I can now change this to something like upload or something like that. And maybe, you know what, maybe I don't like pink, we go back and I change it to green or I change it to teal and say that I don't want it hovered anymore, I want it to be focused. Well, now it's focused. So imagine someone's actually pressing it or it's been clicked. But let's just say we wanna go back to default and we want to change this icon here on the left. The first thing we need to do is actually click on the icon itself. And I'm using command click to kind of go through all the layers and all the, and all the pages, just click command and it'll kind of take you there. You want to click on the layer with the rectangle or with a square or with a diamond and now you can kind of look for any icon you want and these are the icons that we saw before in the initial page we had that huge section of like maybe 200 icons you can kind of just look something up so say that we want maybe here presentation i'll show you guys just so you guys can see that it actually does show up so we click that and now it's there now this might seem a little bit like overkill if you're just doing a one page or a single outline for a client or something like that. But if you buy this kit with the intention of using it over and over and over with different projects, with different pages, with different clients, then it becomes really, really worth it because you have a system that just works for you, not against you. So this is super, super easy and friendly to use. Now, if you go back into components, I can show you guys a little bit more about some of the pages that these guys have built and just how useful it is. So here we saw some of the some of the graphs before that you can kind of use to your own taste and creating them for your own UI elements and things like that. You also get a map of the world with all the different flags that you can change. So say that here, again, I'm just using command to click through. I can go over here, I can change the flag to anything I want. So say I wanted to click the Vietnam flag, for example, well, there you go. That's just how easy that is. You know, you don't you don't need to go looking online for a Vietnam for a Vietnamese flag in SVG or something like that. You just have it all in your Figma file that you can then share with a bunch of people and everybody knows how to use it and it's super super easy. You can also do this with the sidebar, for example. You click through it and here you have all the different all the different examples. So say we want to change the the type, so we have a contracted one. So that again, it's the one that's compressed into the side but no say that we want a default we want it without the icons and then we want it to be gray instead of white there you go right i mean like how easy is that another example i'll show you guys is with the nav bar now this is super super cool because nav bars have always been a bit of a pain in the ass for me so say that we don't want the search input so we can turn that off and say that we want the drop down to be active there you go i mean that's how easy it is to do that and then you can change the different types so you have with the default, we have centered links. So that just makes it easy for you to kind of change that. We have the quick action buttons. So here we have the, the quick action on the right. And then we have left links. So kind of more of a more standard version of the links. And then let's just say that our branding is more of a purple than a white. We go in here and we change this to purple. Now it kind of fits better with our style and with our branding and blah, blah, blah. So you can see just how actually easy it is to change this and to actually set it up for it so that it works better for you rather than against you. And I'll show you guys some more pages that they've created. So here we have a product page where you can kind of see how you would lay out some products. You have a modo page where you can kind of drop down some, some products in. And again, this is all interchangeable with the form section. So say that we want to change the input to be from a text area to just large, right? So I mean, it, it kind of messes, it kind of messed it up because of the text, but you can kind of get the idea. Here we have the some buttons, which you can obviously change. We have billing examples, which can obviously change with the forms. We have invoices, we have 404s, maintenance, reset passwords, some basic pages that, that it's just good to have in case you don't really want to go out and look and look for it. We've got mails, users, 
single mails, more users, profile pages. We have an entire settings page, so it's really easy for you to kind of get the idea. We've got pricing, so you can kind of plan out a pricing page that's just super simple. And obviously this is all changeable. You can kind of customize everything. We've got an FAQ section, a calendar. That's something I've never seen before with a UI kit. We've got a Kanban, which is also something completely new to me with UI kits at least, and obviously with different modals. Now, one of the great things about this is that obviously, as I said, they didn't just do it for desktop, they also made it for tablet and mobile version. So here we have everything we need for the tablet, all the invoicing, the users, the Kanbans, calendars, everything and again for the mobile section. So what does the pricing page look like in the mobile? Well, here you go. And if you're wondering, the variants also work in mobile. So if I want a search input, I can kind of leave that on. If I change the sidebar, if I change the left links, you know, everything is customizable with this and that's why it's so, so good. Now to kind of give a really quick tutorial on how to actually implement it if you don't know already, this is how if you're a developer, then you obviously know how to do this. But for people who aren't really that experienced like me with developing, then this is how you do it. You go into Chrome, you right click into inspect element. We go over into the right section here and say that I want to change the font from black to maybe light. Well, then all I need to do is know this code or this text and change from font dash bold to font dash light. So I didn't really know this code or I didn't know how to actually do this, but here in the style guide, it tells me everything I need to know. So that was a really quick tutorial on how to do that. And I'm sure I might have not checked all the boxes or something, but that's kind of how you do it. Conveniently, their website is done in this UI kit. So if you want to see a real world example, then you can check it out. I'll leave the link in the description so you guys just know how to check that out. And if you guys are wondering, you can actually buy this out right now. The price is $130, but that might seem a bit steep for you if you're not using this every day or every week with clients and with a group or whatever. But yeah, that's the price for the Figma only files. If you want the code version, it's coming out August 10th. However, you can pre order it now for 20% off. And then if you want to get the code and the Figma files together, it's 189. Obviously it's 20% off. Usually it's this price here. So yeah, that's it for me for this UI kit. Thank you guys so much for watching. If, if you enjoyed the video, then let me know down below and I'll make sure to make another one just like this. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.